What is up guys, so today we're gonna talk about should you be a generalist or a specialist? As a designer. If you guys are new to this channel, my name is Brandon Gross. I'm a self-taught designer. I work with brands such as Disney, Dannon, and Huggies. Like Pampers. With that said, what we're gonna be talking about today is should you be a generalist or a specialist as a designer? Specifically, I'm gonna talk to the de designers out there that are looking for work. If you're looking for work, the specialist is the way to go. More often than not, if your portfolio has multiple different types of work in it, when people look at your portfolio, they're like, well, what exactly do you do? It's very hard to look at a portfolio like that that has a whole bunch of different things, what exactly this person does. But if this person has a whole portfolio on UI, obviously you know he's a UI designer. If John has a portfolio all about UX and animation, you know he's very good at user experience and animation. Let's say you have a designer that has branding, UI, UX, um, strategy, SEO, just so much stuff or all these categories of design, it's very hard to be like, well, this person does this. You want to be a specialist so when someone comes and looks at your work, they can either be like, oh, we want him specifically because he's really skilled at this particular skill and that's what, or this skill set and that's what we need. Whereas somebody who's a generalist who does a whole bunch of different things, it's very hard to see what they're particularly good at. The reason I'm saying specifically this is for people who are looking for work is because when you, the context is really important because if you already have work, most of, most likely you are slightly of what we would call a T designer, which is you're very specialized, you, your skill set is very deep in a particular area, but you're also very general in certain areas. You have not just one specific skill set, you have a broader skill set as well. But if you're already hired, you don't have this problem. Most people who do not have work already, they have this problem because they're selling themselves as generalists and therefore they get slotted underneath the A-list, B-list, and C-list designers and because they get hired only if the A-list, B-list, and C-list designers are not available because the people hiring really don't know what a generalist does. They don't, they can't tell where their strong suit is. Rather than saying, I'm good at doing UI, doing, good at doing animation, I'm good at doing UX, and then social media, and then blah, blah, blah. There's too much. If you just say you're a designer that's really good at this one particular thing, which is like UI animation or prototyping, then, and your portfolio shows that, so all your, your your whole portfolio is just about animated experiences of an app and that's your entire portfolio right away the person is like oh this guy is really good at animating prototypes for UI we can see the your strength right away your entire portfolio is consists of the animation of prototypes or the prototype animations of UI and it's very clear and distinct of what you do as a designer so it's clear but if you're a generalist, it's hard to tell what exactly your strong suit is as a hiring person. So this is why, for those of you who are looking for work, I know a lot of you guys talk to me on Instagram and you're always asking me, how, how can I put myself above the competition? This is how you do it. Define your specialization, market yourself as that specialization, and your portfolio should be in line with your specialization. So just from looking at your portfolio in the five seconds, I can tell exactly what you're good at and what you specialize in. So there's no question in my mind, as a hiring person, your skill set. So that's really it guys, general designer versus specialized designer. In this context of if you're looking for work, I would recommend that you go specialize. That way it's easier for someone who's in a hiring position to look at your work, understand what you do right away, and see if you're the, if you're the piece of the puzzle that they're missing. It's a lot easier to decide whether to hire you or not if you are a specialized designer. And once you're in the field, you're more sought out designer, then you can start selling yourself as a, what we talked about earlier, a T designer who has deep specialization and has a broader skill set. So with that guys, those are my thoughts on generalization versus specialists. It's not that one is better than the other, it's just that context is key when thinking and talking about that. To get into the field if you're looking, specialization is key because it's easier to sell yourself and when you're in, when you're already sought out, generalization is the way to go. But that's another video. So with that guys, the question of the day, what are your thoughts on general designer or specialized designer? Drop those down in the comments. Who do you, what do you prefer, general or specific? Drop them. Other than that guys, Brandon Gross, self-taught designer out and I will see you guys tomorrow. Peace.